Welcome to Success Series. Today we are going to look at IS12 income taxes. Let's dive into today's lesson. Now let's look at the objective of IS12. Now the objective of IS12 is to prescribe the accounting treatment for income taxes. And in today's video we are going to look at the, the difference between accounting and taxable profit. Then we'll dive into current tax where we look at its computation as well and then we'll look at the deferred tax as well and we'll look at its computation as well then finally we'll pick an illustration question and then we'll solve it so this is our outline for today's lesson let's dive into today's lesson now we are starting in accounting and tax about profit now let's start with accounting profits now accounting profit is basically the profit before tax simple it's just a profit before tax let's look at this definition over here it says accounting profit is the profit for a period before deducting tax expense and as you said accounting profit is the profit before the tax figure so as i said your accounting profit basically is your profit before tax so following all your accounting rules you used your profit before tax is your accounting profit now let's look at taxable profit now taxable profit is the profit for a period determined in accordance with the rules established by the taxation authorities upon which income taxes are payable so when we say taxable profit is basically the profit in which tax rules are being used to what calculated for it and on which we calculate our tax on it the essence for us to know accounting profit and taxable profit is because with when we come to taxes we charge tax on our taxable profits and specifically when we talk of current tax we charge current tax on our taxable profit so there was always the need for us to do some adjustment to our accounting profit to get our taxable profit and as he said note there is always the need to change what the accounting profit to what taxable profit since current tax is estimated on what the taxable profit now let's look at how we do the changes so how do we adjust or make the changes or change from accounting profit to taxable profit let's look at this so first you bring your accounting profit that's what you want to change now at first after i bring your accounting profit you need to add expenses which I have recorded but they are not taxable so any expense which you have recorded and they are not taxable need to be added back so here expenses when you're when you accounting for expenses under your accounting profit id expenses was a deductible item so you subtracted it and now since you have seen, realized that it's no longer a taxable item there is a need for you to add it back to reflect its new value or to adjust the accounting profit to suit a taxable profit so first add the expenses recorded but not but not taxable then the next one okay typical example could be the case of what depreciation depreciation is, another, is, is a typical example of this particular expense then we also have the instance whereby you having an income which is taxable but you have not recorded them so yeah we have an income item it may be taxable but when you're accounting for your accounting profit you didn't see the essence of recording this so in that case there is a need for you to what add that particular income item and basically with this one depends mainly on the question you get now let's move to the deductible items that are the less aspect then we are expected to less any expenses which are taxable but not recorded so we have some expenses with their taxable all right but we have not recorded them when we're doing that when we're calculating for accounting profits a typical example is capital allowance now when you are doing taxation they account for capital allowance they don't account for depreciation so in the case capital allowance is more of like the tax depreciation the tax people how they calculate for their depreciation based on their pool of assets they deal with so here in this case since capital allowances a expense which is taxable under the tax regime but accounting people don't recognize there is a need for you to less it over here and also you are expected to less any income which is not taxable but you have recorded so there are instances of certain incomes which are 
which are not taxable, but we record them. In that case, you also need to what? Less them. Then once you less them, then we get a taxable profit. So this is how to change the accounting profit to taxable profit. Now let's go to the next one. That's a current income tax. Now let's get the definition. Current tax is the amount of income tax payable or recoverable in respect of what a taxable profit or loss for a period. So here, basically, from the definition, can start current tax is an amount of money we pay or not a taxable profit. And it's also, it can also be recovered in a case whereby you get a taxable loss for a period. So let's look at the formula or the how to measure our current tax. So current tax is basically your taxable profit or loss and you multiply with the tax rate. So based on the tax rate, the current tax rate existing, you multiply your tax rate with your taxable profit. Now let's go to the deferred quickly. Now deferred tax is the income tax payable or recoverable in future periods in respect of temporal difference on use tax losses and on use tax credit. So deferred tax also came into being. And here we see deferred tax from this name is a future, more of like a, a tax you expected to pay in the future. So here, this deferred tax is basically calculated on what we call as a temporal difference on use tax losses and on use tax credit. Now due to this, we have two major types of deferred tax. So as I said, there are two types of deferred tax. And these are number one, Deferred tax liability, and then we have deferred tax assets. Now, deferred tax liability here is a tax that arises from taxable temporal difference. Now, here the key word is taxable temporal difference, it means that this temporal difference is positive. Whenever we have a difference which is positive, meaning, meaning we can tax that particular value, so that's why it's taxable temporal difference. The second one, which is the deferred tax asset, is a tax, deferred tax that arises from here. Yeah, the first one, deductible temporal difference. So, yeah, it means that the temporal difference here is what? Negative. It's negative. That's why it's deductible temporal difference. And the next one, the other conditions follow. So, with unused tax losses and unused tax credit, mainly relates to deferred tax assets. It's only taxable temporal difference that relates to deferred tax liability now let's look at the measurement how do you measure deferred tax so basically you pick your temporal difference and you multiply with the current tax rate existing now there's a need for us to know temporal difference as well now temporal difference is basically your current amount the current amount of basically your assets or liability they are trying to calculate the deferred tax on then you have to less what you call the tax base now the tax base also here it's more of like the current amount, but it's based on the tax people how they compute their their own form of current amount, which they term as the tax rate, the tax base. Now let's look at the current amount over here. According to IS 16, basically current amount is basically the cost of the assets minus the accumulated depreciation minus accumulated what impairment. And we also have to know what is tax base. Now tax base, according to the tax we people it's also their cost the cost of the particular asset then less the accumulated capital allowance remember that the tax people they account for what capital allowance but we are that we the accounting people we are calculate for depreciation uh depreciation so here whilst we subtract accumulated depreciation the tax will have to sub subtract what accumulated a, a, a capital allowance because that's their depreciation so this is how we get a tax base so once you have been able to estimate your your current amount, you estimate your tax base, you would use it to calculate for the temporal difference, whether you're going to get a taxable temporal difference or a deductible temporal difference, which are going to apply your tax rate on to get your deferred tax. Now let's come to our question of the day. It reads Success Series Company bought a delivery van at a cost of 400,000 Ghana CD. It is a policy of the company to depreciate delivery vans at the rate of 25% on straight line basis in accordance with Ghana Revenue Authority Act Act 592 capital allowance is granted at a rate of 40 percent per annum assume that ABC annual accounting profits before taxes 
six million Ghana CD. Also assume the only difference for tax purpose is the adjustment for the assets above. The relevant corporate tax rate is 30%. So here we basically know the cost of the delivery van here, which is what 400,000 Ghana CD. We know the depreciation rate. Yeah, they use straight line method as a method of depreciation. The rate is for 25%. We also know the capital allowance rate. Remember, capital allowance is like the depreciation that tax people also charge on the asset. And for, for the tax people, they use what 40% as a form of like their depreciation with the term as tax capital allowance under the tax regime. So that is it for their own. And here we are also expected to assume that every year we get an annual what accounting profit of what six million so we need to change this accounting profit to taxable profit before we can calculate for our current tax uh, so it's very key and here we are we have also been given the corporate tax rate so let's look at the requirement so required ignoring the fair tax prepare statements of profit or loss extract for each of the four years of the asset life so here we are expected to ignore the fair tax meaning that with a we are only accounting for its current tax and let's look at the B as well. Accounting for deferred tax, prepare statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position extra for each of the years. So here with the first one, we are saying we should ignore deferred tax, meaning we are expected to only account for current tax. And with the second one, meaning we should account for deferred tax. So meaning with the second one, we are accounting for both deferred and then current tax. So let's look at how we are going to solve this question. So first, when we are solving this question, we need to change our accounting profit to get what our taxable profit so this is how we go about it so from the format we gave we have you first have to bring your accounting profit you add any expenses which has been recorded but it's not taxable and yeah i gave it because example as depreciation so yeah depreciation we need to calculate for depreciation so yeah the accounting profit is six million which was annual for each year now depreciation we're given the rates that we expected to use. So we'll apply that rate over here. And applying we get we had what hundred thousand Ghana City. Let's go back and then look at the rate. The rate was what twenty-five percent. So the rate you're applying is twenty-five. So we'll charge twenty-five percent on the four hundred thousand Ghana City. So we we'll, we'll calculate twenty-five percent on four hundred thousand Ghana City. And that's what is giving us the 100,000. Now, to get a capital allowance as well, it's going to be 40% on the 400,000 Ghana City as well. So, yeah, basically, that's how we, we had it. So, the 100, and we'll, we'll add the 100,000 Ghana City to the 6 million to get 6 million 100,000 for year one, and then we'll less the capital allowance for that particular the capital allowance we, we saw the rate was 40 percent we charge it on the on the cost of the assets as well we get 160,000 and then that will remain for year one and then year two but look at year three year three we have 80,000 why is it so if you go back we realize that the cost of the asset is what 400,000 Ghana city and bear in mind that the amount you charge for capital allowance or let me say the tax depreciation that's the way the tax people they charge their depreciation the amount of depreciation you, you calculate for does not exceed the cost of the assets so over here with year one it was 160,000 let's add 160 to that of year two 160 what we get we get an amount of 320,000 Ghana city and you could see that here the remaining amount that we have is only what 80,000 so we can't charge an additional 160 again because over here the amount left out of the asset is only what 80,000 so 80,000 will be the remainder and so that's the only one we can charge for capital allowance and year 4 there will be nothing at all to charge for it so that's how to get the capital allowance for the respective years now we less the capital allowance from the summation of the accounting profit and the depreciation to get our taxable profits now once we get our taxable profit then we charge our current tax on it which is what 30 percent then we get the current tax the respective current tax for each of the period now let's move to 
the presentation itself. So presentation, how are we expected to present? The question says we should present in statement of profit or loss. So we bring a statement of profit or loss. Remember to bring the number of years. The question said for, for, for the four years. So we have to bring the four years. The currency sign, very key. Bring the currency sign here. Yeah, I brought three zeros on top because the figures were uh, millions. So I brought the three zeros on top to ease the writing. And then first you have to bring, we are presenting in line with IS1. So we have to first bring our profits before tax. Then we'll bring the what current tax. Remember, A was only for current tax. So our tax expense here is only current tax. So we'll bring our current tax here, which is the equivalent to the tax expense because since it was the only one. So the current that the tax I had for uh, the workings, so I'll bring them here. Also, year one, I brought it here two, year three, and in year four. Then we'll subtract this from the profits before tax to get the profits after tax or what we also term as the profits for the year the profits for the year basically we also bring it there to get a profit for the year and that will end our answer to a now let's go to b how do we go about it b now remember the b we are accounting for what deferred tax over here so deferred tax here we will need the current amount we will need the tax base to get our temporal difference before we can charge deferred tax so we have to bring the current amount now for year one current amount will be three hundred thousand how do we get three hundred thousand remember it's what cost minus what accumulated depreciation so the cost of the asset is four hundred thousand ghana city depreciation for year one when we go back remember depreciation for year one year we had what hundred thousand ghana it was hundred thousand throughout the depreciation for year one was hundred thousand ghana city that was the reason why year was for three hundred thousand that was the reason why year was three hundred thousand so year two was two hundred thousand year three hundred thousand by year four will be dash so year one is cost the cost is four hundred thousand we charge the position of hundred thousand so we had what three hundred thousand as a residual year two is going to be three hundred thousand minus one hundred thousand which gives us what two hundred thousand year three is going to be two hundred thousand minus one hundred thousand which gives us what one hundred thousand and then year four is going to be one hundred thousand minus one hundred thousand, which will give us what? Nah, no, nothing. Then let's come to the tax base. Remember, the tax base is the tax code, the current amount as well. So it's the cost minus the accumulated what capital allowance. So here, yeah, the cost of the asset is what four hundred thousand, will less that of what the capital allowance for year one. Year one was what one sixty thousand. So. 400,000 minus 160,000 will give us an amount of what 240,000. So that will be the tax base for year one. Then with year two, to we charge an additional what 160,000. So it's going to be what once and uh, then remainder which was 240,000 minus 160,000, which will give us 80,000 80, Ghana CD, which will be the tax base for year two. And remember, year three, it was only left with 80,000. 80,000 as a capital allowance, so we'll subtract this 80,000 from the remainder, which is the 80,000 left, and then we have nothing, and that will give us a temporal difference. And once you get a temporal difference, we charge the, the tax rate on it. The tax rate here, per our question was 30 percent, so we charge 30 percent on the 60,000 to give us the 18,000, 30 percent on 120,000 to give us 36,000, and 30 percent on 100,000 to give us what the 30,000. Now, after you have gotten this, we need to find the tax expense. Remember, tax expense now will be the current tax which you already calculated in A plus the deferred tax which you calculated in what B. And here, with deferred tax B, with the statement of profit or loss, we account for its increase or decrease. So here we come here in calculating for the tax expense with the first year. We will bring the deferred tax, which was 18,000. Then we we'll add the current tax, which was 1,782,000. So that will give us an amount of 1,800,000. When we come to year two, we are now going to bring the increase in the deferred tax. So year one, we had deferred tax of what? 18,000. And then year two was what? 36,000. So we have to look for the difference in the increase. So we say that from year one to year two, there was an increase. In the deferred tax, so it's going to be thirty-six thousand minus eighteen thousand 
plus the current tax and the current tax components was 1,782,000 and that was to give us 1,800,000 let me go to year 3 year 3 now we realize you had a decrease so it was year 2 was 36,000 and year 3 was what 30,000 so the difference is going to be a decrease and so here it's going to be 30,000 minus 36,000 and then we'll add the current tax for year three and current tax for year three was one million eight hundred and six thousand and this when we do the summation will give us what one million eight hundred thousand let's go to year four so year four we didn't have any value for deferred tax as at year four so we only had year three so here when we come to year four it's going to be the year four value which is zero over year minus year three which is what 30,000 then plus we we'll add the current tax for the year and the current tax from the A was 1,830,000 and this will give us a total amount of what 1,800,000 so you could realize that after adding the deferred to the current we have a constant tax expense yes this is true because of what the deferred tax I say is a future tax you are expected to pay uh -huh. so Whenever you add it together, it's expected to give you the same tax and the same tax for the respective years that you pay. Just that, that's why there will be a different, different in each of the year, the values you get for your deferred tax. And remember that in the statement of profit or loss, we only account for the increase or decrease in the deferred tax. So that's why all this came into being. So let's move to the presentation. So with a presentation under statement of profit or loss, remember to bring your year, your currency sign. We'll bring our profits before tax, which was what six million. Remember three zeros on top, so I am going to say six thousand. The six thousand throughout each year. We'll bring our tax expense, which was what one million eight hundred thousand throughout. So one million eight hundred thousand, one million eight hundred thousand for year two, one million eight hundred thousand for year three, one million eight hundred thousand. And then the profit before tax will be worth four million two hundred thousand. So that will end the statement of profit or loss. I'll be also asked us to prepare the statement of financial position extract. So here we need to show the value of the asset for the year that's the non-current asset according to IS 16. And then also we need to show the deferred tax and then the current tax. Remember, current tax is a current liability item, whereas deferred tax is what and on current liability item so now let's dive into the presentation so we'll bring the heading statement of financial position the year and then the currency sign we'll, let's start with the non current asset where we are going to bring the current amount of the asset so we end up pp the year one is going to be 300,000 how do we get 300,000 the cost of the asset was 400,000 remember the depreciation for year one was what 100,000 and so subtracting we'll get an amount of what 300,000 so year two is going to be three hundred thousand minus the depreciation for year two, which was hundred thousand. We get two hundred thousand. Year three is going to be two hundred thousand minus the depreciation we charge for year three, which was hundred thousand, and that will give us hundred thousand. Year four is going to be hundred thousand minus the depreciation we charge for year four, which was also hundred thousand. That will leave us with year four without nothing. Then we we'll move to the non-current liability, and here we are expected to show the deferred tax. So we we'll show the deferred tax. The deferred tax for each of the year will bring them here all year. So year one was eighteen thousand, year two thirty six thousand, year three thirty thousand. And we come to current liabilities where we are expected to show the current tax as well. So current tax for year one one million seven hundred and eighty two thousand. Current tax for year two one million seven hundred and eighty two thousand. Current tax for year three one million eight hundred and six thousand. Current tax for year for one million eight hundred and thirty thousand and that will bring us to the end of the part one of this video bye bye